Hey guys, Christian here. Today, let's check out some of the new features in the Docker and Kubernetes management platform Portana. Because Portana recently did a rebranding with new colors, a new logo, but beyond the new and shiny look of their website, they also improved in some technical areas in their management application. So I thought it's just about time that we take a look together. Even though I haven't really used Portana a lot in the recent past, but since I enabled the Docker Swarm mode on some of my home lab servers. By the way, check out the Docker Swarm video if you haven't done it already. There I just realized Portana is a huge help because it's great to manage Docker Swarm clusters. And I've also tried out a few unexplored features like the Portana's Terraform provider, which brings some interesting automation capabilities to that system that really made me think if I should use it more often in the future. We will see. But at least I thought, let's do a quick run through together. Let's check out the new features beyond the rebranding and review some automation features I haven't really covered yet on my channel. Uh, by the way, if you're managing containers, clusters, and maybe other services in your infrastructure, it's also important to monitor these systems and of course get notified about any bottlenecks or problems. So that's why you should use CheckMK, the sponsor of today's video. CheckMK is a comprehensive IT monitoring platform that is scalable, automated and highly extensible. With over 2000 licensed plugins, it can monitor nearly all of your network components across different manufacturers and it has many advanced capabilities like auto discovery with pre-configured thresholds and rules, custom plugins, the features are just insane. Furthermore, it creates stunning visualizations, has dynamic dashboards with logs and event monitoring that really allow you to drill into all of the details of your infrastructure. It is really super cool. I'm personally using the free and open source raw edition of CheckMK in my home lab, which I already did some videos on, so definitely check them out if you like. And if you want to use CheckMK in your company's infrastructure to monitor your production systems, they have many options to deploy a self-hosted solution or use their cloud service offerings. Of course, I will put your link to CheckMK and my tutorials in the description box down below. Alright guys, let's check out the rebranded Portainer's website. Honestly, I'm a little upset they didn't took the chance to enable a dark mode by default. But as you can see, they got a new logo, they got new purple colors and a new design. You can clearly see that they shifted their focus a little more to the enterprise field and the enterprise customers with a big partnership to Volkswagen. By the way, is a nice car and some other big uh, partnerships and brands. So you can definitely see they follow a pattern here in the open source uh, business community. More and more companies are going into that direction. They start with open source projects because they get a lot of funding. But after a few years, when they need to become profitable, they start putting some features behind paywalls and they start uh, introducing enterprise plans and shift their focus a little into that direction. However, my honest opinion about this is, I think it is still a fair deal because they have the home and student license for $150 a year, which is similar to other offerings that you will find. For example, Unraid has a similar license model. At the end of the day, maintaining an application, developing new features, hiring engineers and stuff like that just costs money. So somebody needs to pay it. And I think if they let the enterprise companies pay the most money and it gives us the ability with some free community editions or home and student licenses to get these cool features and use it in our home lab environment. Well, I think there's nothing wrong about this. However, you can really see they kind of like hide their community edition a little, though it is still active, of course. So if you go to the main navigation, go to resources and there you will find the Portana CE edition that brings us to the Git repository where we can find instructions and you see the Portana community edition that is the lightweight uh, platform that is still open source and you can still install without any limitations in your home lab. I personally, I'm also using the community edition and not the home and student license, but you can really decide for yourself if you want to use the free community edition or you want to pay for the home and student license that has the same features as the business one. 
so it's basically up to you. Uh, by the way, if you want to install Portainer or install the Community Edition, it's also pretty uh, simple. You just go to their documentation. So there you still find the instructions how to set up a Portainer Community Edition as a Docker standalone version, Docker Swarm. Uh, you can even manage Portman, though not all features are supported there as far as I know. But hey, at least you can do it if you're preferring Portman over Docker. And of course, you can also install and even manage Kubernetes. What is pretty cool if you install Portainer, it doesn't really matter where you install it. If you install this as a standalone container, Swarm, Portman or Kubernetes, you can still manage all of these environments from one central Portainer instance. So I can show you when you go to environments, you can just easily add a new environment, then select the environment you want to manage and then start the wizard where you can select between the different management possibilities, either use the Portainer agent, which is definitely the recommended way to manage any uh, environments. Uh, but you can still connect using the API or the Docker socket that's sometimes useful for standalone containers, or you can use the edge agents. So that is useful if you want to manage environments where you can't directly connect to. So you deploy the edge agent somewhere and then it connects backwards to your Portainer's instance. Otherwise the agent, you will initiate the connection from Portainer to your environments. And here you can find the commands and instructions. Just copy the commands, deploy the agent on your uh, Docker Swarm cluster or your Kubernetes cluster, and then add the environment address where the Portainer agent is accessible and it connects from the management platform to that remote environment. Uh, by the way, if you want to have a tutorial about how to set up Portainer yourself, you can uh, refer to the official documentation. But of course, you can also check out my GitHub boilerplate. So there I'm managing templates to deploy Portainer in a standalone Docker Compose. And I'm currently also working on some improvements for the boilerplates to add some more environments like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm uh, to deploy Portainer there as well. Okay, but if you're already a Portainer user, you will know all this stuff. As you can see here, I'm currently managing a Docker standalone container, the server prod uh, 7. I'm managing a Kubernetes cluster and a Docker Swarm cluster with that. So I'm really managing every container orchestration platform that I'm deploying in my home lab. And I think this is really great. Let me show you some of the new features uh, for Kubernetes because their Portainer definitely had some large room for improvement. And they really introduced some useful stuff here. The most interesting one for me is the new Helm chart integration. You can easily now manage any Helm charts that you have deployed on your Kubernetes cluster, no matter if you have done that from Portana itself, or if you're using the Helm CLI tools or any other uh, deployment tools, you can still open this. For example, when I go to my third manager uh, Helm chart, you can see all of the details here. Um, you can upgrade to the latest version. You can do rollbacks and you can even inspect some of the important stuff like the resources, like all of the objects that this Helm chart has deployed on your Kubernetes cluster. You can see and inspect. You can even open them when you click on describe and it will show you the uh, manifest of these objects. And for troubleshooting, you can drill into the events. You can also see the Helm values of the chart. So the custom values that you have uh, um, deployed this chart with. I think this is really incredibly useful. Uh, but you can also deselect the user defined ones. Then you see all of the values that are possible and can customize them, update the deployment. And yeah, that is really great to manage any application. And then of course, you can even roll back to previous revisions. So Portainer really improved a lot in Helm chart management. That honestly made this uh, platform a lot more useful to me when managing my Kubernetes cluster because I'm mostly deploying everything in Helm charts. You can also now see the ingress objects and service objects. One thing that is a bit unfortunate though, you only see the Kubernetes standard ingress objects. You don't see the traffic ingress objects, so the ingress routes, unfortunately. That's something that Portainer still needs to improve. However, you can now see most of the Kubernetes standard resources like config secrets, volumes that was possible before, but now you can also see cron jobs and jobs, service accounts, uh, cluster roles and roles. So you can really now drill into 
all of the important resources in your cluster. And that is really great for Kubernetes management. But uh, Portana also did some great stuff when it comes to container uh, management with Docker. So for both the Swarm and the Standalone. I think these features, to be fair, have been implemented in Portana quite some time ago. There was not so much new stuff. However, because I just recently became a new Swarm a fan or a Swarm user. Um, I haven't explored many of the Swarm features in Portana before because I couldn't use them. Uh, but now, since I enabled Docker Swarm, I can now see all of the Swarm stacks. You can even see the type here if it's Swarm or Compose, what is pretty nice. What is still a bit unfortunate in Portana, and I really hate this, that you still can't control stacks or services that you have created outside of Portana. So you can see them, you can uh, inspect some of the details, but you cannot make any edits to this. Um, that's still a limitation in Portana that really bothers me, to be honest. Um, here you can see there is a swarm stack that I have deployed using Portana. The, there I have total control, so I can uh, go into all of the details. I can edit uh, all of the details and redeploy it, make updates and so on. But that, again, is not possible for any externally created stacks. And that was really the one and only reason why I didn't want to use Portana a lot in the past. Because sometimes I might want to use automation tools like GitLab CI, where I'm executing some Docker CLI commands, or I'm using any other automation tools to create my stacks, and then I can later not manage them in Portana. However, I think I found kind of a solution to that because I recently found the Portainer's Terraform provider. And Terraform is, as you might know from watching some of my other videos, my absolute favorite automation tool or platform because there I'm managing many, many of my projects. And that kind of solves the problem of when I'm using GitLab CI CD or other automation pipelines, I can now use a standardized tool to deploy my Docker Compose stacks or my Docker Swarm stacks but I still later have total control over this. So I think this is pretty cool. And I thought, let me quickly show you how to do this because it is really damn simple. By the way, if you're not familiar with Terraform, of course, I've made tutorials about that. So definitely check out uh, my Terraform uh, videos. Then you really know how to use this, but it's actually not that difficult. You just install the OpenTOFO or Terraform CLI tools on your local device and then create the providers file, initialize a new project. Why not? Let's do this quickly together. I think that's super easy. So let's just uh, create a new directory. For example, let's deploy a simple Nginx uh, server on my Docker Swarm cluster using Terraform. So let's cd into this and open this project. So here we will always start with a provider.tf. So this is the Terraform file where we just need to paste in the provider's main configuration. So let's just grab that. And now in the Portainer's uh, provider settings, we of course need to configure the authentication. So we need the Portainer endpoint. This is the main URL of the Portainer instance. So in my case, this is portainerhome.ccreative.de. Then we need the API key, which we usually don't want to store uh, in clear text in this Terraform file. So therefore I would uh, create a new variable called Portana API key, which of course has the type string and is uh, sensitive, yes. And we can later on load this from environment variables or when we create a secrets.audu.tfvars file. So these uh, are variables that you can exclude from your Git repository and will automatically be loaded into the Terraform's uh, project. So just use the same variable name as you defined here, Portana API key, and then put your API key in here. Of course, I'm not gonna show this to you right now. By the way, if you have trouble authenticating because you're not using a trusted TLS certificate, you can also set the skip SSL verify to true. So then it's not verifying the SSL certificate of your Portainer's instance. Because I'm using traffic and trusted TLS certificates, um, I can set this to false. And then we have everything uh, to initialize the project. So let's go back to the terminal 
And uh, now it's depending on if you have installed the Terraform commands or if you have installed OpenTOFU, which is a fork of the previous open source version of Terraform. No, because they changed to this business available license. Again, I, let's not get into licensing. I've made a separate video about OpenTOFU, so check that out if you want. But you can use Terraform or OpenTOFU. It's mostly kind of the same. So let's initialize a new project that will now um, create a new Terraform folder, download the Portainers provider when you configured everything correctly. And once the project has been successfully initialized, we can now start creating our resources. So to do that, let's go back to the documentation. Here in the resources, you can see everything that you can create through Terraform. So you can see there's really a lot. You can manage Docker secrets for Docker Swarm. You can manage Docker volumes with it. You can even manage Kubernetes objects, Kubernetes applications. So you can install Helm charts through uh, Portana when using the Terraform provider. That's pretty cool. I really didn't know that it was that capable. So I absolutely love this. If you want to deploy Docker standalone uh, projects or if you want to deploy uh, Docker Swarm stacks, you can use the Portainer stack resource. So this works for both standalone Swarm or even Kubernetes. That is really nice. Here are some examples for deploying Docker standalone stacks from a string. So you just uh, take this object and then you put your compose file between these EOT uh, delimiters. Or what you can also do is you can deploy this from a Git repository. Uh, with automatic updates. So that is really nice. If you change the configuration on the Git repository, it will pull down the latest versions and automatically deploy this using Portainer. Uh, but for now, I just want to deploy a swarm stack uh, using a simple string. So here, uh, let's go to VS Code. Uh, I'm usually creating a new file for this uh, just for easier management. So Portainer stack.tf. Uh, here we can paste in the example. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to let the GitHub Copilot do this for me. That's going to be a lot easier. Now, one thing is uh, something that you need to adjust manually. That is the endpoint ID. So the endpoint ID is the unique identifier of the Portana environment where you want to deploy this stack on. So when we go back to the web interface of Portana and we go to environments, and you take a look at the address bar, you can see right after the endpoint slash and number, the 25. That is the unique ID of the environment that we have opened. So if we go back to VS Code, just put in the number 25, and I think that everything is all right. So yeah, I could now let AI deploy this for me, but I'm just going to show you how to do it manually. It's probably much more valuable for a tutorial. So let's first of all run the tofu plan command. So that will tell me, okay, there's one change. We want to deploy a new swarm stack um, to the environment 25. So let's just run the apply and confirm this. Yes. And now it's communicating with Portainer and it's creating the Docker stack. Here you can see creation was successful. If we now go back to Portainer and select my Docker Swarm cluster, we should see a new stack in here. Here you can see this is the Nginx test one. And you can also see that we have total control over the stack because we have deployed it using Portainer, just not the web UI, but we've used OpenTOFU or Terraform to automate that for us. And we can still go in here, we can delete this stack, we can stop it, we have the editor to change anything inside. And of course, you should not really do this from the web UI if you're using automation tools, I know. Uh, but I think it is still great that you have this uh, full visibility of uh, the services and the stack configuration or the stack file. And you can now use any other automation platform or any automation tool using Terraform or OpenTOFU to deploy anything or change anything on your Portainer's configuration. That honestly makes Portainer a lot more attractive to me. The only problem, of course, is if I, for whatever reason, want to switch from Portainer to something else. So I am probably even more into this vendor login uh, and dependent on Portainer. So that's a decision you need to make for yourself. If you want to build all your automation pipelines on Portainer and trust this tool and use it, or if you prefer any other tools to manage your environments, I personally will use Portainer a lot more in the future because of these automation capabilities. And it's making things a lot easier for me. You can see how fast it is to deploy anything in an automated way. I really like this a lot. 
But that's of course just my personal opinion. Now I would like to hear yours, so let me know in the comments what do you think about the new Portana after the rebranding? Does it now have some more interesting features? Do you like the automation and stuff like that? I would really love to hear from you. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos on my channel and thank you so much for all the supporters. You guys are really amazing. And of course, I'm catching you all in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.